Good afternoon, this is Sean Golden with Golden Golden, here to discuss the basics of what you're going to do to be in compliance in 2022 to report your 2021 foreign assets, accounts, investments, and income. Works the same as a tax return, right? It's the current year, 2022, you report prior year assets and accounts and things of that nature. Let's go through the basics, right? This is just a basic introduction. First, who has to report? It's U.S. persons. U.S. persons doesn't only mean individuals. That's what we specialize in here, but it could also mean uh, domestic uh, companies and things of that nature. Person doesn't mean individual. So U.S. citizen, lawful permanent resident, foreign national who meets a substantial presence test. If a U.S. citizen, no matter where they live, <laughs> they're, they're stuck with it. Um, lawful permanent residents, green card holders. Uh, if they live overseas, they may qualify as a foreign resident under the treaty. They may make a treaty election to be treated as a foreign resident. And sometimes they can circumvent or sidestep uh, the global reporting and income requirements. Uh, quick aside, the U.S. taxes individuals on their worldwide income. Global asset reporting for U.S. persons, not just U.S. citizens. If you happen to unfortunately fall into the catch-all category of foreign national who meets a substantial presence test, or if you're on an O-1, H-1B, L-1, B-1, um, doesn't matter. It's not just employment. So things like a B-1, B-2 uh, would still qualify for investment type of visa. And you're here for too many days in the U.S., then you would qualify as a U.S. person and you get treated the same way as a citizen or permanent resident. But what you may be able to do, either meet one of the exclusions or the exception, which is that you have a closer connection to a foreign country or countries, you file a form, I believe it's 8840. Uh, the treaty election for permanent residence is form 8833. So what has to be filed, right? It's, there are a lot of different types of accounts and, and assets. People think FBAR and they think bank accounts and they think that's really all she wrote, but it's way more in depth than that. So you've got your foreign bank accounts, but that also includes current accounts, checking accounts, savings accounts, investment accounts, um, fixed deposits, term deposits, whatever you call them, whatever country you reside in, they're all reportable. Assets, assets can go on forever, but typically investment accounts would be assets, stock, securities, uh, partnerships, uh, corporations, other entities, joint ventures, real estate, but there is some limited reporting if it's individually owned versus if it's in an entity. Foreign life insurance policies, when they have a cash value or surrender value, foreign pension plans, cryptocurrency, they have a whole bunch of regulations pending. Uh, they want you to report it essentially. And then gifts are reportable as well. Trust distributions, all that good stuff. So there are many different types of reporting requirements, but here are the basic ones that you should kind of be aware of to get an idea of whether you need to report. There's the FBAR foreign bank and financial account reporting. It's filed electronically. It used to be a TD90 form. Um, it's filed directly on the FinCEN website. It is not an IRS form. So even if you have no tax return and no income, you still required to report it if you're a US person and you meet the threshold. It's, it used to be due June 30th, I think up until like 2016, they changed that to April 15th, but it's been on what's called an automatic extension, which means now it's due in October um, but you want to always double check that. And I always reiterate that because it's not guaranteed. Form 8938 is not instead of the FBAR. It's, unfortunately, it's in addition to the FBAR. And that is actually part of your tax return. FBAR is not. So one, one standout feature for the 8938 is if you don't have to file a tax return, you don't have to file the 8938. You, an acronym you'll see a lot with 8938 is FATCA, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. And if you happen to meet the threshold, but you don't otherwise have to file a tax return because you're below the income threshold, let's say, you don't have to run off and file a tax return just in order to prove that you that you filed the 8938. It's only a part of it of the tax return if you have to file it. There may be duplicate reporting with the FBAR, but it requires more reporting than the FBAR. The FBAR has nothing to do with income, so there's nothing about it on there. But for 8938, you have to identify if there's any income associated with the assets, and then you have to categorize it based on things like interest, dividends, royalties, capital gains, other income, etc., etc. Unlike the 8938, which is only required when you have a tax return filing requirement, there are many other forms, and most of them are, refire, uh, are required whether or not you have to file a tax return. The Form 3520 is used to report foreign gifts and trusts, uh, distributions, ownership, 
That's required whether or not you have to file a tax return. Same with the 8621, which is for passive foreign investment companies. 5471 and 865 are for entities and partnerships. Those are also required even if you don't have a return. And as you may be aware, there are tons of different penalties to be, uh, determined based on whether or not um, you missed it for one year, if you missed it for multiple years, if you have multiple filing requirements and they don't tend to overlap. So they could literally hit you with several different penalties on several different forms. Although typically you can uh, minimize or abate the penalties with uh, offshore disclosure or reasonable cause. Which brings me to my next point, and this is very important. If this is the first year you're required to file, then it's great getting to comp uh, start in compliance, stay in compliance, you're good to go. If you had this requirement in prior years, but you didn't do it, then you got to be careful of just filing in the current year or going back and mass filing in prior years without getting into compliance the proper way through offshore disclosure. Otherwise, that's called a quiet disclosure and the IRS does enforce that. Doesn't mean you're going to get caught. Plenty of people probably do it, never get caught. But if you do, the penalties can be pretty severe. If you're willful or just can't certify under penalty or perjury that you're non-willful, some people are uncomfortable doing that based on their own facts. You would do VDP, which is a voluntary disclosure program. Otherwise, there's lots of different non-willful programs available. There's the streamlined procedures, reasonable cause, delinquency, and, and various versions of those programs as well. If you're out of compliance and you want to do the research first, we have tons of information available on our main website and our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.